100 million people worldwide are pushed into poverty because of direct health payments, according to the World Health Organization, WHO. According to the Acting Commissioner Planning in the Minister of Health, Dr. Sarah Biachika, in Uganda, 37% of expenditure for health is out of pocket. Because we have the government contribution, we have the donor contribution, then we have the, that, that comes out directly to finance uh, the poor care. The country offers free health care to the populace, but how free is it? Rabina Kaitari Timba, the executive director for the Uganda National Health Consumers Organization, UNHCO, ponders upon this. We have under table payments. If you go to a health center, sometimes you have to pay the security guard at the gate. You have to pay the one who's registering you. You have to buy gloves. You have to buy gauze. You must buy Macintosh for mothers who are going to deliver. So it is not really free. Dr. Grace is a health economist and focal point person for universal health coverage at WHO Uganda. She states the solution to all these as being one, each country taking on universal health coverage or UHC. Basically ensuring that there is universal access to needed, effective, cost effective, essential health services that are of good quality and in a manner that does not expose the user to financial hardship. Uh, be it preventive, promotive, curative, or rehabilitative services. So here the emphasis is we are looking at everybody. To categorically show that the country is serious about universal health coverage, a five-year European Union supported initiative was launched by His Excellency Ambassador Christian Schmidt on 19th March 2015. The EU has invested about 3.2 million euros and partners are to contribute about 800,000 euros. It's called supporting policy engagement for evidence-based decisions. SPEED. It's a partnership of four Ugandan organizations including Makere University School of Public Health, Uganda National Health Consumers Organization, Economic Policy Research Center, and the National Planning Authority with ITM from Belgium and Human Sciences Research Council in South Africa. Professor Fred Sengoba, an associate professor at the School of Public Health in Health Systems Management, who is also the SPEED principal investigator, says the project is supporting policy engagement for evidence-based decision-making in Uganda. That is able to drive the health sector particularly going forward. But what does it mean for the country? We are also working on putting in place mechanisms that will help us to uh, reduce these financial hardships. With science making lives better, UNHCO's Robina believes no one should miss out on quality care. We want support for systems. If, for instance, we have health workers paid, we have health systems strengthened, we have equipment, we have buildings, then people can pay. For treatment. Universal health coverage is expected to improve tremendously the health MDGs which Uganda has struggled to achieve and is one of the targets for sustainable development goals. It ensures a healthy and productive populace but not only that because you're consuming less because you're healthy you're able to save so your propensity to save increases. This is emphasized in the new health sector development plan. We hope that uh, the next financial year we would have something really concrete to demonstrate that Uganda has, is adapting the approach of universal health coverage. WHO is working with the governments to ensure that they take it on post-2015 and feasibility will depend on a number of factors. It is a journey. No country can boast of having attained universal health coverage. No country in the world, even the high-income countries. Each country is at its own level and there is need to have an understanding of what to do. And sometimes they talk about it being a zigzag process. It is a very political thing. You know, it has to, it, it, the governments have to, to, to agree that this is what they want to do. Okay, we have the taxes as the major source, but we are also looking at contributions from the health insurance schemes. Uganda has developed a policy on national health insurance which is being considered by cabinet and the parliament. However, some communities have their own health insurance schemes. Yusuf Mukasa, a farmer in Luweru district, has 36 children and is glad he joined the Munumburade, a network of schemes under Save for Health Uganda. 
Sometimes I take my wife and the bill is about 300,000, but I pay about 120,000. People to enroll, they pay 32,500, but can access care up to 200,000 shillings. And that takes them a whole year. When I go to the hospital, I don't need hard cash. This health insurance card is my money. They, however, say accessing health care is sometimes a challenge. Yet for universal health coverage to be fully realized, physical accessibility has to be eased. And this is why all the work cannot be left to the Ministry of Health alone. Ideally, it's not important to get people to get sick and then ask health sector to treat them. The idea is if we know education helps people to live good lifestyle and choose uh, things that are helpful, how is the education sector preparing people and young generation to take good choices? If it is about nutrition, do we have an agricultural policy and intervention that speak to good nutrition, which food and all that? If it is road sector creating accidents, what are we doing? If it is policing border borders and helmet, how can we achieve that? In other words, every sector actually has a role for universal health coverage to be realized. But right now, we want to bring all this together. We have to work together with the politicians as well because they mobilize the communities. The SPEED initiative under the Makere University School of Public Health is organizing the National Symposium on Universal Health Coverage in Uganda. The theme is Towards Universal Health Coverage in Uganda, Building on Successes and Ensuring Health Systems Resilience. The overall aim of the symposium is to examine the various health policies, systems components, programs and institutional developments in the past 10 to 15 years and draw implications policies and advice on how to build on the past and current situation to advance UHC in Uganda. The symposium will bring together key players in UHC in order to facilitate joint learning and knowledge exchange to address the following key policy questions. What should be the strategic direction for Uganda to address UHC? What has worked well and needs scale up? What has not worked well and why? What changes are necessary for building strong and resilient health systems for UHC? How have the institutions and their roles changed to support health system development? What can we learn from policy and program developments and implementation in the last 10 to 15 years? To bring them to the table and say, now we are being given this uh, new strategy, universal health coverage. It's already in the health policy. It's already talked about in the National uh, Development Plan 2040, the vision. Um, so how do we start to unpack it? How do we start to understand it? The UHC concept came to fruition in the WHO report of 2010 where sustainable health financing was discussed for universal health coverage. The MDGs have taught us that um, yes, with a handful of targets you can do much but you may not actually change the health status of the population. Without partnerships though, a lot may be done but little will be achieved without a common vision. And in this case, everyone has to work towards a healthy and productive populace.